Win bigger, win better with Pixby Casino Online. Simply go to your browser and click www.pixbycasino.co.sz and tap into a world of infinite possibilities and winnings. T's and C's apply. It has just gone 8 o'clock Central African time. Good evening and welcome to the newest bulletin at 8 brought to you by Swatin TV. My name is Sana Boingon alongside Zamanza Manza. Thank you so much indeed for choosing to stay with us. We're coming to you live from our hospital here studios in Babane. Let's take a look at our top stories. The Minister of Public Works and Transport Principal Secretary says the ministry is in a process to convert a Swatin's driver's license to K53 which will enable it to be compatible to a computer system that will be introduced by the country. Senators are holding deliberations with the Secretariat from the Southern African Development Community and other organizations with the intention of combating the increasing numbers of gender-based violence. And a very few business owners showed interest in showing up to pay their taxes under the tax debt relief program conducted by the Swatton Revenue Services, which ends this Friday. And now the news in detail. The Minister of Public Works and Transport, Principal Secretary uh, Tulanum Kalipi, says the ministry is in a process to convert a Swatana's driver's license to K53, which will enable it to be compatible to a computer system that will be introduced by the country. Kalipi says this will make it easier for regular traffic offenders to be caught and have their driver's licenses revoked. In a bid to reduce accidents on the road, the Minister of Public Works and Transport will this month start a process whereby it is expected to engage a consultant which will assist in making a certain driver's license to be compatible to a computer system as means to revoke driver's license of negligence drivers. The Minister of Public Works and Transport Principal Secretary Tula Nimkalipi says next month a tender will be awarded to a consulted company to do the job. He says in December, trials of the exercise will be rolled out, while in March next year, it is expected to be fully rolled out. Sirele se kufuna kukwenda ake singla laba petele malama driver's licenses. Mlogo kutsi, ifunele let ignigete ma poid le system, uma ongo mshai logas. Pinze ikumoge ma poid, uma ongo mshai logabi. Upinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinzupinz
nabaka finance nema poisa si sala na boga ni si pele si ulugu si September kuto katu chabo September si tabe si na ye loyo kwa pesha la tabe si lungsela le system si 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 kali le lugu si kufanya kuto makufanya bo December si be si porta lugu si kuko ni material le si swenda ako ngale system lens le si tabe si swenda ngayo Tahu tu kalau niaga lontar aku bom match, aku September tu setiap hari setiap hari kabel sisi tengah file lapu. Kau kan jauh tu sesi roller out tiga file at full scale le system lunch. Kalipi says the introduction of the new system will also help in reducing accident on freeways. He says residents close to freeways, after seeing an increase in accidents, he will eventually pay with the ministry to build speed humps. For Eswatin TV News, Fortune, Langa Manja, with Fuminko Usin Zinisa Esulwini. Senators are holding deliberations with the Secretariat from the Southern African Development Community and other organizations with the intention of combating the increasing numbers of gender-based violence in the country. Senators are engaging on a gender-based violence sensitization workshop with the SADAC Secretariat and the European Union to review strategies in tackling gender-based violence. The SADAC representative Gyalebuha Morudi says they also intend to assist and reinforce national efforts on the fight against gender-based violence. Our responsibility as a secretariat is to develop normative frameworks for addressing emerging security challenges as they present themselves. I wish to bring to the attention of this um, house today the regional overarching tools that guide the gender-based violence agenda. We have got the national, um, we've got the Vision 2050, that is started Vision 2050, <coughs> and the Regional Indicative Strategic <coughs> Development Plan. These recognize the prevention and reduction of GBV as a catalyst for attaining peace and security. The acting Senate President Dumisom Zuli highlighted keynotes of the speech from the drone, which speaks to protection of children and women's rights. The speech from the throne endorses that government will continue to invest timely and appropriately in the welfare of children because they are key to the future of this country and are attainment of the Continental Vision 2063. Moreover, the European Union Ambassador Chamoliva Tesislava says the country will not achieve sustainable development without attaining gender equality. Because sustainable development and progress cannot be achieved without gender equality and without meaningful enhancement of women's economic and political participation. Gender equality will therefore continue to be mainstream across all European Union funded programs and projects. Part of the objectives of the SADAC protocol on gender and development is the implementation of gender responsive legislation, policies, programs and projects. For Swatini TV News, I'm Tandugu Shemzuli with Sifiso Ngumalo, Babane. The government of Swatini spokesperson Alfie Ngumalo refutes damning allegations made by the former Economic Freedom Fighters Secretary General Godrich Gadi that the government had a hand in the death of his daughter Hilary Gadi. Ngumalo says Swatini's government has no history of political assassinations. Hilary Gadi was a daughter to former Secretary General of the Economic Freedom Fighters, Godrich Gadi. She was reported missing on April 29th after she was spotted at the Mbombela Plaza Super Spa. She was discovered dead on May 3rd. On Twitter platforms, Godrich claims that the government of Eswatin had had a hand in the death of her daughter. Eswatin government spokesperson Alfius Umalo vehemently refused the claims. The Kingdom of Eswatin and our government has never been associated in the past, present, and in the future, we don't anticipate to be associated with political assassinations, sponsoring such, or even lobbying, or, or influencing such. What I don't really get to understand clearly here is that why Mr. Gadi 
is bringing the whole country to a situation that particularly concerns him and his family. This is a sad situation. He lost a daughter. The matter is in court. There are suspects. Uh, the, the, whatever that has been investigated there, there is no substance or truth that has been established that will either link or even indicate that the, the, the government of Eswatin is involved in that situation. We can only request Mr. Gadi to respect us as a sovereign country. We don't mind them coming to dance in the border. Toy -toy. They've done that for many years. There is no government that you can change by toy -toy or dancing at the border. Let him wait for his, the justice process of his country to unfold so that he can establish the truth as to what happened to his daughter. In as far as we are concerned as a government of the Kingdom of Eswatini, these are wild allegations and we cannot dignify them with any further comment. Three suspects have been arrested for the murder of God. These are Philmon Lukele, Sipo Lorenz Mkachwa, as well as Albert Mtutu's Gam. They face counts of murder, rape, found in possession of illegal firearm, as well as conspiracy to commit murder. For Eswatin TV News, Fortune, Langa Manta, with Fumiko Sinzinisa Mpabane. The Chief Executive Officer at the Swatin Tourism Authority, Linda Ngamalo, says the Swatin Mozambique and Pumalanga Treeland projects seeks to promote the region as a tourist trade and investment destination. Ngamalo is speaking uh, about the upcoming Treeland tour of the three countries' tourist attractions. The Kingdom of Swatini through the Swatini Tourism Authority, ETA, signed a memorandum of understanding under the Treeland Initiative with South Africa's Mpumalanga Tourism and Parks Agency and the Mozambique Tourism Board with the aim to promote the region as a tourist, trade and investment destination. As Swatini Tourism Authority's Chief Executive Officer Linda Ngomalo says, the Triland Initiative seeks to define the Mozambique Swatini Mpumalanga route to further attract international travellers. What we seek to achieve is to address issues of airlift. Airlift being how does a person come to Mbomalanga and then connect to Eswatini and then connect to Mozambique. So we are still having conversations around that. Secondly, we want to engage in joint marketing, um, regional destination marketing. And there we want to do website sharing and other key marketing initiatives that are going to promote the, the, the three countries as a block not only to our local markets, because the, the, the domestic market will want to experience the trident. And then we will then also open it up to the region and then the international community as well. Critically, we want to attract an international traveler to come to the region and experience the region as a block, because you will realize that when someone makes um, a travel decision, they obviously will want to experience more than one country. So it is in that light that we decided to include issues of destination uh, marketing, joint destination marketing as part of our initiative. The marketing tour is expected to start on the 15th of this month with King's Opusa, the second memorial park, Ezrini Handcraft Market, as well as Swazi Kangles on the visitation list. Reporting for Swati TV News, I am Samgal Sivikosa with Mova Shongwe. Babane. A very few business owners showed interest in showing up to pay their taxes under the tax debt relief program conducted by the Swatin Revenue Services, which ends this Friday. The customer service manager at the Revenue Services, Ricardo Kruger, says the numbers are disappointing despite this attempt. In an effort to relieve business owners of unpaid tax, the Minister of Finance, Neil Rickenbeck, introduced the tax debt relief program for business owners to come forward and work on how they can pay their tax rather than invading it. The program comes to an end this coming Friday. The customer service manager at the Assorting Revenue Service, Ricardo Kruka, says the numbers were disappointing despite that this was an effort to help them. Looking at the number of applications that we have received uh, versus the number of taxpayers that are actually owing in taxes, uh, we think that the, um, the, 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 the percentage is still relatively low. Uh, yes, we have seen quite a huge amount of people starting to, or a significant amount of people starting to come through in the last two weeks. Uh, but still, uh, it's not near what we were expecting. You know, we really expected that with the program as attractive and as good as this year, we would see a much larger number of tax debtors coming through. 
and putting in their applications to be part of the program. Will there be any action taken against tax invaders after Friday? Naturally, once the program ends, uh, we will then need to go back to our mandate as set out by uh, the, the, the Revenue Authority Act, uh, whereby we need to then reinstitute all the programs that we would normally run on, uh, you know, on any uh, given day towards ensuring that people uh, do comply with the tax laws. The program was introduced on the 5th of May after millions of Malangani were owed the certain revenue service. Reporting, I am Kian MCB with Smova Shongwe. Azulini. Businessman Walter Bennett is pleading with the High Court to grant him an order to evict seven homesteads from his farm at his company that they have allegedly occupied it illegally. The position of the farm is 246, which is measuring 85,000 hectares. One of the cases that were before High Court Judge Judge Zonke Makakula on Tuesday is that of businessman Walter Bennett. The businessman wants the court to grant him an order to evict seven homesteads that allegedly occupy his farm illegally. Bennett prays that the High Court will return to him his land. He continues to add that talks over the removal of the alleged illegal farm dwellers started back in the year 2012. He says the District Tribunal and Central Tribunal have separate rule to his favor in the matter. He further informed the court that negotiations between the two parties fell out as the defendants allegedly abandoned the negotiation table. The negotiations hoped to set time frames on when the alleged farm dwellers were to leave the farm or to agree on a buying price. He alleged that defendants allegedly told him the land was allegedly allocated to them by the inner council of Sikombeni chief Tom. He further adds that he also wants their structures in his farm demolished and they should also pay costs for the trial. He says his heart is heavy on this. He says despite the fact that the matter is now before court is still open for negotiations, however, there should be a time frame. He mentioned that the Minister of Natural Resources and Energy also intervened in the matter and extended its appreciation over how he handled the matter. He says the Human Rights Commission also attended to the matter. However, it failed to come up with a resolution. He said this process was a waste of his time as it failed to even set up an appointment between the two parties. The plaintiff in the issue is Skombeni Enterprises PTYLTD, while the defendants are Shetrak Shele, Stembi Sokam, Simon Kulwago, Dumisa Shongwe, Mrs. Nsinan, Elizabeth Lamin, Martin Vilagati. The Land Management Board, the National Commissioner of Police, the Attorney General, as well as the Inner Council of Skombeni Chief Dome. On Wednesday, the defendants' legal representatives are expected to cross-examine the evidence given by Walter Bennett. Bennett's attorney is Sabelo Mgomezulu of Mgomezulu attorneys, while the defendants are represented by Sipo Mtsinane of Mtsinane attorneys, as well as Tulan Masego. For Eswatin TV News, Fortune, Langa Mandla, High Court. Business Development Services uh, Manager at the Junior Achievement Swatin Sabele Lamini says one of the challenges faced by the youth in business development is the lack of innovation and access to finance. Lamini has been speaking during a six-day workshop for out-of-school youth at the Lutzelutze constituency. The Junior Achievement Swatin, with the support from the United Nations Children Fund UNICEF, started a Generation Unlimited Social Entrepreneurship project last year with 100 out-of-school youth. On Tuesday, JA commenced the second year of the project with 60 aspiring entrepreneurs of the Lutze Lutze in Kundla, where they were capacitated on business management as well as writing competitive business plans. Business Development Services Manager at JA Sabelo Lamini says one of the challenges in youth entrepreneurship in the Kingdom of Eswatini is lack of innovation and access to finance, which will be addressed by the workshop. One uh, challenge um, that we have noted, the major one, are uh, the sources of finance. Uh, finance has been a, a challenge. Um, young people don't have a track record of how to save the, their money in the bank. And that is why the issue of formalizing the businesses, it's one of our main focus in our trainings. We must formalize your business. You must keep your business records very well. 
you must have a bank account where you will be banking your, 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 your business money so that you will create that track record. When now you want to go to the financier to ask for a loan, then it becomes easy. So that's one angle. Another one, of course, that we, we have uh, realized, which we are addressing through this training, is the lack of innovation uh, in these different businesses. So what we are saying to young people, we are saying, you can do what somebody else is doing, but at the extra before the ordinary, so that you become extraordinary. Participants at the workshop said they hope this initiative will help improve their businesses. Kutang sita kakulu sisi ngoba ngiafisa lo kutu ngikulise ibe yungkulu ngkone glima infoli yungkulu ngkone ne kutu ngibiyele la pungli mekono. Mwesi nyes kasu limile ni tungo mozeti ya gulela so so ubiyela emuva kutang sita nje kakulu lolo shangutu. Itang sita kakulu sisi le workshop le na ngoba ngimundu Doge was a Mago Richester, a little pepper, a business, and a little pepper, a business, a passenger, and a little car. Gang as a Max Bend and our Cabangotti Junior Achievement, Utang Setal, Utang Wheel, a little popular business. The workshop is expected to take six days and will be followed by an incubation project of a year. Reporting for a certain TV news, I'm Sam Gelsu, a cause out smoother Shongwe, Lutze Lutze. His Majesty's Correctional Services says they do not intervene uh, when an ex-convict faces challenges and being welcomed back into the society after serving their sentence. This follows cases of ex-convicts feeling unwelcomed in their societies despite after or the aftercare service program by the Correctional Services. His Majesty's Correctional Services has the aftercare service program where the officers pay a visit to communities of convicts to educate them about welcoming them back to society. Following that, the ex-convicts would have been rehabilitated and served their sentence. Some of the ex-inmates are, however, said to be facing difficulties back in society as some are unwelcome, thus forced to relocate and live with relatives. The news crew spoke to the communications officer Kukule Tuldamini if they do intervene when an ex-inmate faces difficulty back in society upon release. In case a person comes and, and report to correctional services that he or she is encountering problems outside or he doesn't have a place to stay, we intervene, we do come in, but while preparing for that for, for him to find a place to stay, we, we seek for alternative places. And that program, as well as I have said, doesn't take, uh, it takes a, long, a longer period. So we need patience so that we'll be able to conduct or maybe to meet all the, 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 the people who are affected or maybe all the people who are not in good terms with the offender. She says due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and the recent unrest, they were forced to hold their visits to communities. But following the recent cases of inmates being unaccepted in societies, they will have to revisit communities yet again. She adds that the ex-convicts have a duty to ask for forgiveness from those that they have wronged for them to live harmoniously. Reporting for Swatini TV News, I'm Kian MCB with Smuva Shongwe, Babane. Right now, let's take a look at our financial indexes and see how markets perform today in our financial report. Standard Bank. It can be. Welcome back. You're still with the news bulletin at 8 at Swatin TV. Thanks so much indeed for choosing to stay with us. Right now, let's take a look at news making headlines in the world of sports. It was another unsuccessful day for Team Swatin at uh, this year's Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, England. Swimming stars Manga Lamini was concluding his swimming competitions at this year's Games while Athletics Trio Bonga Matlalela and Malaza and Menzwogu Tlemsi had their first test of the Commonwealth Games. It was another tough day for Team Eswatini that there is representing the country at this year's Commonwealth Games, starting with swimming star Smangal Lamini, who finished last in his heat of 50 meters freestyle. Smangal's performance was the last in this year's Commonwealth Games. Athletics trio Menzogutle Msibi, Ayanda Malaza and Bongyo Mashalira Msibi managed to break a new personal best as he finished fifth in his heat of seven athletes. While Mashalera finished 6th 
in her heat of eight athlete. Ayanda Malaza was another unlucky athlete who ended up suffering an injury during his race. For Swatin TV Sports, Fabiso Msunera, picture sourced from the team in Birmingham, England. This association president, Derek Jele, says the association has received a scholarship from the Swatin Olympic and Commonwealth Games Association that will see the tennis association capacitating around 50 local tennis coaches. Jele was speaking during the Swaziland Building Society tournament prize presentation at Wellesen. Swatini Tennis Association is working tirelessly in trying to improve the standard of tennis in the country. Having now secured the scholarship from Swatini Olympic and Commonwealth Games Association, the association will be looking to capacitate coaches in different parts of the country. The association's president, Derek Jerry, says the same team of coaches will be given a mandate of increasing number of women in the sport. So our plan uh, to fix uh, the club structures of tennis is that we need to get more coaches who are able to go to their different clubs to bring up players in those clubs. So the sponsorship uh, from um, Olympic Solidarity will be announced in the next couple of weeks. What we hope to do with that sponsorship is that we're going to be training up to 50 coaches throughout the country from schools and from um, other bodies that are interested in tennis. What we then hope to do is we then hope to get those coaches to go back out into their respectable uh, places to start up teams, teams which will then form together to form clubs. On another note, Ferrai Marea was the eventual Swazian Being Society tournament over the weekend after beating Tulanigina on the finals and walked away with 3.5 in Malangeni. The tournament. Um, the tournament was amazing. I don't want to lie, I had an amazing um, pathway or road, if I may say, or journey. Um, it wasn't bad. It was amazing. Yeah, seeing players like Tulani in such a country is actually amazing. He's an amazing player. It means the, the sport is growing itself. Yeah, so yeah, I'm happy for my sport and for the country. Under the women category, Tansi Lamini defended the title as she walked away with 2,000 Malangeni. Uh, it was tough, Kona, but uh, I tried to train a uh, background my semi-finals, but I did make it through my finals, and it was a fantastic game because I only left in Jingham. So, big, it's a mind game because it's Lala the same technique. We are doing fine, we're doing okay. Uh, so, I improved my name, I joined my tournament, my ladies, so well. At footing, I got a lot of good back to back about joining the sport. It's an amazing sport, very amazing. The association has revealed that sooner the juniors tournament will be taking place. For certain TV sports, for Bismuth Sonera, Matsapa. Well, with those sports news, we've reached the home stretch of the news bulletin at 88 at Swatin TV. But before we go, here's a quick reminder of our news making headlines tonight. The Minister of Public Works and Transport Principal Secretary says the ministry is in a process to convert a Swatin's driver's license to K53, which will enable it to be compatible to a computer system that will be introduced by the country. Senators are holding deliberations with the Secretariat from the Southern African Development Community and other organizations with the intention of combating the increasing numbers of gender-based violence. And a very few business owners showed interest in showing up to pay their taxes under the tax debt relief program conducted by the Swatin Revenue Services, which ends this Friday. Beautiful Kingdom of Swatin, thank you so much indeed for choosing to stay with us. We shall now cross over to the Weather Center for a detailed weather report from us and the rest of the team here at Swatin TV. For now, it's good night and God bless.